In essence, if you're cramping during a workout, it is a potassium deficiency or potassium issue. Now let's talk about what happens if you cramp in the middle of the night, because we've all experienced that before. Okay, I'll be laying in bed and all of a sudden my calf will just cramp at 2.30 in the morning. I'm like, what the heck's going on? Like, I didn't do anything to deserve this. But that is more than likely it's so easy to think that when your muscles cramp up that you're just deficient in electrolytes in general. You might think that, hey, maybe I'm not getting enough sodium or maybe I'm not getting enough potassium or some random mineral, right? Well, truth be told, depending on what you are doing and what kind of activity and where you are in terms of your activity level versus rest, it could be a very specific mineral issue. So there's different kinds of muscle cramps and that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Now, this is for informational purposes only. I'm not a doctor. Honestly, I'm just some guy on the internet that used to be fat and I know a little bit of biochemistry. So let's break down what's happening when your muscle cramps between a workout cramp or just a cramp in the middle of the night and how you can go about fixing the issue. Before I get into the biochemistry, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that little bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a beat. All right, here's the science of what's going on when our muscle uh, contracts, okay? Now, keep in mind that a cramp is just a contraction that's not letting go. If I flex my bicep, that's a contraction. But if that sucker stays like that, <laughs> that turns into a cramp and it can keep going. We've all experienced that before, maybe when you're swimming or something like that. Okay, we have what is called an action potential. An action potential is just like the name implies. It is the potential to have an action and it's set out by our nervous system. So what happens is that action potential triggers the release of calcium that is inside our muscle. Yes, that's right, we have calcium stored up in our muscle. Okay, and what happens is the action potential releases calcium, the calcium binds to a protein, and it triggers the muscle to contract. Now, ordinarily, in a normally functioning electrolyte system, that calcium's going to get taken back up by the muscle again, and it's going to repeat the cycle. So released by the muscle, triggers contraction by binding to a protein, and then gets taken back up by the muscle and goes through the cycle again, gets released again. Now the relaxation of a muscle when it releases that contraction is dependent upon the reuptake of that calcium. So if that calcium doesn't go back into storage, your muscle will stay locked up. So here's the caveat and here's how you determine what kind of mineral you need. Okay, and spoiler alert, it's not calcium. You don't need calcium. If anything, you need less of it in this case, to be more than honest. Okay, it takes energy, literally energy, ATP, for the calcium to go back into the muscle. So if you're deep into a workout, you could imagine that your actual literal energy is in high demand, okay? So you don't have a lot of it to spare. So after or during a hard workout, it's easy to cramp up, okay? Now here's the thing, potassium is required to create the energy that allows the calcium to go back into the muscle. Let me say that again. Potassium is required for the energy that takes calcium and puts it back into the muscle. So in essence, without potassium, calcium can never go back into its storage in the muscle and doesn't let go. So it stays tightened up. Okay, now another way to explain this is, if an action potential, the potential for energy, is coming at such a fast rate and the calcium reuptake can't keep up with it, the muscle stays contracted. Now let me give you sort of an analogy and this will make hopefully really clear sense, all right? Let's say you work at a restaurant, okay, and you're waiting tables and a busload of people come by and they sit down and you're just going crazy trying to make sure that you can serve all these tables and you're doing what you can, okay? And then another bus comes, and another bus comes, and another bus comes, but you never get a chance to clear the tables, okay? The plates are gonna pile up, people are gonna pile up, there's gonna be a weight, your muscle is cramped, it's stuck, it can't do anything, okay? But if you have enough potassium, you're spacing apart those shuttle buses, giving yourself a chance to clear a table, let someone else come in, okay? So that's a perfect example of what's happening when your muscle stays contracted. So usually with electrolytes, you don't need a bunch of sodium. You usually need a balance of potassium and magnesium, which we'll talk about in a second. By the way, I do recommend a company called Jigsaw down below if you're looking for an electrolyte blend because its focus isn't on sodium. It's focused more on potassium and magnesium, which are the two things we really need to focus on here when we're looking at muscle cramps in general. 
So highly recommend you check them out. They have something called a pickleball cocktail. They created it for the pickleball community, but quite honestly, it's just a tremendous electrolyte blend. So highly recommend you check it out. Sweetened with monk fruit, so it's super good to go for fasting. Uh, Jigsaw is a great supporter of this channel, so I highly recommend them. Check them out down below in the description. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Okay, let's talk potassium for just a second at a little deeper level. Okay. So what happens is we have a balance of sodium and potassium at a membrane level, and it's called a gradient. Okay, we always need to have a certain level of sodium and a certain level of potassium to keep fluid in check and to keep energy in check. When we sweat, we don't lose perfect equal ratios of sodium and potassium. In fact, arguably, people tend to lose a lot of potassium. It all depends on the activity, how big the muscle group is, etc. Okay, so if we're sweating and we're losing potassium, then do the math then we end up with more calcium and potentially more sodium or potentially just a skewed membrane gradient that throws off how a muscle contracts. So in essence, if you're cramping during a workout, it is a potassium deficiency or potassium issue. Now let's talk about what happens if you cramp in the middle of the night, because we've all experienced that before. Okay, I'll be laying in bed and all of a sudden my calf will just cramp at 2.30 in the morning. I'm like, what the heck's going on? Like, I didn't do anything to deserve this. But that is more than likely a magnesium issue. Here's what's going on. Magnesium reduces neuromuscular excitability. Okay, so neuromuscular excitability can occur at any point. It doesn't have to be during a workout. Okay, if you just have overexcitement of a muscle, then you're gonna end up with a cramp a lot of times. Magnesium assists in this because magnesium regulates the calcium. Okay, remember how I talked about calcium leaves the muscle and goes and binds to a protein and triggers a contraction? Well, it turns out magnesium is sort of a gatekeeper and makes it so that calcium doesn't just totally rush out of the muscle binding to everything. So going back to the analogy of waiting tables, imagine this. Magnesium is like a speed bump that stops the shuttle buses from coming in so close together. By putting some magnesium speed bumps in, the buses have to slow down making it so that when you get a surge of customers, you actually have a chance to clean up before the next shuttle bus arrives. So if you're magnesium deficient, which again can happen with electrolyte deficiencies from working out, but also just general living, then yeah, the shuttle buses start coming again and they'll come randomly at random hours of the night and you'll end up with a cramp. The short answer is when you're deficient in magnesium, you have this neuronal overexcitability. So think about when you're stressed out, you're like this, right? Well, magnesium helps modulate that neuronal excitability. I can speak from my own experience that magnesium helps me sort of relax. I feel like my shoulders relax. Sometimes, you know, we've all been stressed out where you feel like your shoulders are up to your ears. And I'm like that all the time. You probably notice it in some of my videos just because I'm high strung sometimes. And that just helps calm me down. Okay, and that's how magnesium works. So usually when you're looking at electrolyte blends to modulate cramping, it's a little bit less about the sodium. I mean, that's very important but in my opinion, more about the balance of the potassium and magnesium. Potassium for the short-term intra-workout cramp and magnesium for the long tail after effect or nighttime cramps. As always, please keep it locked in here on my channel. And remember, I'm just some guy on the internet, not a doctor. See you tomorrow.